Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special weekly Oscar talk episode where today it's the, it's 2023 officially as of recording. The 2022 film season has ended, so we are going to be giving, uh, it's just going to be a general discussion about our favorite films, performances, directing, so surprising theater experiences, all that fun stuff that happened this year. Uh, we're going to be doing our own awards show nominations wise in a few weeks, uh, sometime soon. So you can look out for that, which will be much more structured. Uh, but now we're just going to be talking about 2022. And we also haven't seen absolutely everything yet. There's a few movies both of us need we're to catch human. up on. We're human. We apologize. I haven't seen like all thousand films that released this past year. Like I still need to see. I think Decision to Leave is still my biggest blind spot. So um, and plenty and of women talking, but women each of talking. us have seen the other. So mm-hmm. I think together we're yeah. good. <laughs> we are. Yeah, we we cover a pretty large ground. Um, but yeah, it's not our final top tens or final favorite performances, et cetera, et cetera. You will see that when we do our actual like awards ceremony, hopefully we'll have seen pretty much everything by then. But um, right now it's just a fun discussion because it's the end of the year. So let's start by doing our top 10 films of the year. Um, hmm. Do you want to do it where you give, where I give my 10 and you give your 10 and back and forth, back and forth? Or do you want to just list them out? Uh, I mean, sure, that works. We okay. can do the 10. The, the okay. One the what, what, what's your number 10? I mean, it's it's there's a whole bunch of I mean, this was a really great year. I think this might be the year I turn back to more often, just looking at like the wide variety of films. I feel like also because coming out of the pandemic, we got a lot of like big films. I think that will definitely be this will be the year that of the like the modern epic, definitely the modern Hollywood epic. So it was difficult because there were so many I was like trying to get on the list. Um, I mean, I can just run through a couple honorable mentions real quick. Um. It's so tough. I, I'm going to leave something off. It's hard. But, um, yeah. uh, I'll start with uh, Breaking, which was the John Boyega movie. If you oh, I still need to see that. Yeah. So really, I've heard he's great in it. He's extraordinary. He might come up later in our conversations. Um, Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris is such a delightful mm. movie. I mean, Leslie Manville is a who, L who pair. You can't do them wrong. The Northman, Avatar The Way of Water, Bardo, False Chronicles of a Handful of Truths. It's in your need to. You got to have those long titles. Yeah. Um, Glass Onion, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, Decision to Leave, The Batman, and then these last two really struggling to get on the list: Top Gun Maverick and Petite mm. Maman. I really uh, those two. I mean, it's really tough. It's really tough. It's tough to just make ten. Yeah. Yeah. So those are my honorable mentions. My number ten is Triangle of Sadness, which I okay, yeah, particularly enjoyed. I found this to be structurally interesting, with a lot of really uh, just fantastically bizarre performances, uh, and just one of the most surprising films I've seen this year. So yeah, number ten. It's really a tie between that and Petit Maman, though, because Petit Maman is everything Triangle of Sadness is, and it's such a sweet, delicate film. It's only seventy-two minutes. It's so just succinct in its beauty. So I, I'm gonna tie those, honestly. <laughs> fair, fair. As a, as a um Celine Sciamma stan, I'm a little disappointed. I still haven't seen Petit Maman, but on Hulu, I'm going to in the U.S. It's on Hulu. Okay, yeah. I will, I'm going to watch it soon then. Um, once I catch up with everything this year. But yes, uh, my honorable mentions. Uh, I I'm in a similar situation where I've got two films really fighting it out for that ten spot. And I really feel bad for the one I'm going to have to kick out. But besides those two, my honorable mentions, Pinocchio. I really liked Pinocchio. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Not any of the other ones that released this year. Um, Guillermo del Toro. I mean, it's re- it's really just like, wait, I don't, need, I don't need to give like reviews of like my honorable mentions. Never mind. Um, Prey. I, I surprisingly liked Prey. That really surprised I me. I missed that one. I have to circle back. Oh, it's really good. The cinematography in particular is beautiful. Um, she said a great journalism movie i just love those kind of movies bodies 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 was a great fun movie yeah uh top gun maverick was also very fun marcel just so heartwarming causeway i could i could keep going but um <laughs> those are just some highlights um and then the number one honorable mention is triangle of sadness which was your number 10 it's my 11 um so close to getting in there it really breaks my heart that it's not my number 10 uh, but my number 10 is Banshees of Inishirin. Um, I really, really like this movie. Um, all the performances, I would say maybe, I don't know, there's some good options. Maybe, actually, probably second. There's another film that I think is full of like 
the most amazing performances, like just quantity wise. Um, but this is up there in terms of the amount of incredible performances in this film. Um, all four of them will probably be nominated, which makes me very excited. Uh, in particular, Barry Keoghan is incredible in this film. I really mm-hmm. liked him. Carrie Condon, Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson, they're also good. And the writing is really good. Um, it's also, unlike some of Martin McDonough's other films, I feel like there's something a little deeper going on there as well. Um, yeah, and it just makes you feel all the emotions. So I really like that film. So it's my number 10. Uh, your number 10 is my number 9. Oh, uh, it's the synergy. Yes, the synergy. Uh, the Banshee's been a sheer, and I concur with everything you said. I think this is a film that is small in scope, but that smaller scale complements the huge emotions at play here. It's a film that kind of goes into the legacy of kindness in such an enthralling way. Um, it is just wickedly hilarious, but also at points so just all-encompassing to the darkness of the human spirit. Uh, the performances walk that tonal line beautifully. Um, I think Kerry Condon and Barry Keoghan in particular are just incredible, the true definition of supporting performances. And I think Colin Farrell also maybe gives the best performance of his career. He is really great in seeing, you know, we, we've seen so many characters descend uh, and I think to see it here is one of the more refreshing takes on a character who kind of is succumbing to their own um, darkness in in the world. Uh, so Banshees is my number nine. The more I think about it, I think I'm going to put Petite Maman at my number 10, though. The more I think oh. about it. Yeah, these lists so, will probably continue to change yeah. just over rewatches. I'm I'm I have all the movies here. I'm looking at the posters and I just remember how I felt leaving that movie. So I'm going to, and you, you mentioned Triangle of Sadness. So I, I feel good. It's our communal number 11. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There we go. Um, my number nine, probably going to be higher on your list. I would guess is the Fablemans. I, I surprisingly enjoyed this film. Usually a lot of, I like coming of age films, but I don't know, maybe it's just Belfast didn't really resonate with me last year. I was kind of, kind of, um, the whole filmmaker revisiting their childhood thing, I was like kind of getting a little tired of, but I really surprisingly enjoyed this. Uh, first watch, I had some questions. It didn't completely resonate with me, but the second watch, it like really held up. The first watch, parts of it felt a little um disconnected, disjointed in terms of the storylines, but the second watch, I could like it all kind of melted together. Um, once I knew everything that would happen, much better for me. Um. I don't know, just the focus on filmmaking I found to be the most interesting aspect. I do like the family aspects as well, but I just love the way it portrays someone whose mind is just always, like, if you have one of those minds who's just, like, pretty much in every moment in life, like, how would how would I film this? Um, it portrays that very well. And I do think the high school stuff is probably my least favorite part, um, just because it doesn't completely fit in, but I still really enjoyed it. All the performances, really good. I think Gabriel LaBelle, Speaking of breakout performances, uh, one of the great breakout performances this year. Um, Michelle Williams, hit or miss. There are some great moments with her. There are some moments that I'm still like, "Mm." but Paul Dano also great subtle work here. I think really good performance from him. Um, And yeah, incredibly well directed. I mean, everything technically wise, you you can always say that with every Spielberg film. It's a consistency. Uh, But yeah, I really enjoyed the films. Um, The more I think about it, the more I like it. Wonderful, wonderful. I imagine um, it'll be all talked right. about later as well. Potentially. <laughs> um, so number eight for me is from one of the filmmakers on this list who I contest has made only A-plus films. That is Jordan Peele with Nope. Uh, I loved Nope. I thought this was so smart in delivering a just a, a true encapsulation of where uh, the modern film industry is. Another movie talks about the origins of it. This is talking about where we are today. And I just found this film to be endlessly like interesting. Like it never stopped engaging me. I loved how it talked about, you know, the power of sight and seeing certain things. Uh, I loved how it talked about the people that are ignored and, and the, and the, what happens when, those people aren't reflected in the lives that they want to be seen in. Uh, There is just so many fantastic sequences in this film, really inventive storytelling techniques, uh, artistic designs. The sequences were, uh, again, similarly to Banshees of Inishir, and there were points that it was just so hilarious, but at some points it was truly terrifying. 
And I think the just Daniel Kaluuya and Kiki Palmer lead this mm-hmm. film so extraordinarily well, well beyond their years. They are two of the most uh, enigmatic electric performances of 2022. And I'm just continually impressed by Jordan Peele, who I think is making some of the most necessary Hollywood films of his day. So number eight, a very strong number eight is Nope. Yes, yes. You may hear about that more on my list later on. Um, <laughs> very similar. Not to spoil everything, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, my number eight is um, a film that I haven't seen, sadly, on many people's top ten lists that are going around. It is the one and only Cha Cha Real Smooth from um, director and actor Cooper Rafe, starring Dakota Johnson. Um, on Apple TV, if you haven't seen it, it seems like lots of people haven't seen it. So um, please, I, I very much suggest it. I think uh, it just really resonated with me it, emotionally. Every everything, just every storyline, whether it's with his brother, with Dakota Johnson, with um, her daughter, with his mother, everything just it felt very real, but it all felt um very emotionally resonating and everything just the vibes i really enjoyed it haven't seen it in a long time so my thoughts aren't as fresh on it but i i still remember after that first watch how much i really enjoyed it so um yeah touch real smooth it definitely captures the energy of being at a bot, uh, bar of bot mitzvah it's very good in yeah that um and i love dakota johnson so yeah good great yeah great, she was great. great yeah all right number seven uh i have the best animated film of the year, Marcel the Shell, which is... Uh, I found this film... This film was devastating to me. I just... Tears running down my face. I just found this to be so profound into just the questions we ask in trying to define our experiences as being alive. I just... This is a completely original film. It totally works as the concept that it is you know you wouldn't think that it's able to sustain this sort of feature length drama but it is uh i marcel is just an instant superstar i thought it was so uh, innovative and you know the animation and you know melding that with the live action there were just so many like little it's it's a moment when you realize your innocence is kind of fading away and you're trying to hold on to it Isabella Rossellini gives one of the best voice performances I've ever heard. It just, it's a movie that will make you feel full. And I think that's the best way to describe it. So Marcel the Shell just it captured my heart and I've only seen it once. And still it's, oh, it's, wow. it's, it's, it's one of the two movies on my list that I've only seen once. Oh no, three Petit Maman. I also only saw it once. Um, but I think that just shows you the power that it can have on that one watch. If you haven't seen it, I think it's probably one of the fewer like lesser scene of these on my list yeah i highly recommend you check it out yes love me some marcel i agree um my number six we're on six now right yeah my number six uh, seven, is... seven, seven. Oh yeah seven yeah i'm losing track my well, number seven skip over <laughs> oh i can't skip over this one my number seven is women talking which um i just recently saw it's 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 a really incredible movie it really uh blew me away incredibly well directed sarah Pauli. you can i know people say it's like not very directory but so much of direction is directing your actors and the acting here is incredible the i this would be i know i was talking about banshees earlier about how all these amazing performances in one ensemble this would probably be i think the best bang for your buck in terms of great performances inside an ensemble Every actress here and actor, including Ben Wisha, um, is really, really good. They're on top tier level performance wise. And it's only I think it's only like an hour and 40 minutes. And I just it blows my mind how she manages that Sarah Polly to um make a whole ensemble of characters that like at least eight main characters also deeply um complex and nuanced. And you feel like you understand them so much more than plenty of characters in films that are much longer than that. She gives all of them their own personal um, perspective and arc, and it's just incredibly well-written. Um, it's deep. Um, it's nuanced. The way it just explores it, like in, the way it explores everything within that runtime, it explores gender, class, religion, um, just everything. It's insane. Um, yeah, I loved this movie uh, and all of the acting. Oh my God, Jesse Buckley. She's really in this movie. Jesse Buckley and Claire Foy. And also, I can see I can't pick one. Um, but also, Rooney Mara. I know Rooney Mara has not been getting enough um, shout outs. She has one of the more um, 
she's i guess technically lead but it's really an ensemble um she has a little more of a subtler role but um just every line delivery she's a very um optimistic character and um you felt it with every line that she gives and jesse buckley i think has probably the biggest arc throughout the whole film and um she just really kills it especially in the third act and claire foy always good um, and especially the older actresses as well um sheila mccarthy and judith ivy also very good everyone's amazing watch this movie when you get the chance color grading is not an issue also color <laughs> grading is perfect it's some of the best cinematography i've seen this year so i'm gonna talk on my list i will uh, i will be seeing it soon and it may take that number 10 spot or go higher we shall see yes. um number six no surprise from here i think this is a film that i just truly just was confronted by i was challenged by it while also being thoroughly entertained. I came back today for my seventh watch of it, and I feel very strongly that this year would be, I would be remiss not to include it on this list, and that is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Oh, nice. I'm incredibly, um, though I loved a lot of the you know superhero movies, I am a fan of this genre. Uh, I do think that what Ryan Coogler and his team created not only was, matched the heights of the first film, uh, but I think it honors the late Chadwick Boseman in just truly such a beautiful way. I think this film is like Marcel the Shell. It is devastatingly emotional as it, it truly feels profound and how it truly, I think it really understands the anger that can come out of grief. And I think the performances across the board just capture every single type of reaction beautifully. Uh, I, I found it to be such an engaging film of how it is, is it's telling the story about, the effects of uh, colonization um, and, and colonial colonialism, and also just how how that can affect the grieving processes of independent cultures and the interplay between them. It's a film about protection, uh, which is similar to another film on this list, um, and when mm -hmm. protection and love get conflated. And but I truly, truly just want to include it also because I just have such respect for the creative team for coming together as i've said in this moment of hurt to create this film uh and there are just certain moments of this movie i i you know we've talked about it a lot but i just want now that we've all seen it hopefully uh there's this hopefully, moment yeah. at the end when you know sherry is holding the blade to no more and you see her playing back moments and it's going backwards and it's and that it's just this feeling of if you reverse time and you reverse things, then you don't actually truly live. And that selective process to your experience can really affect how you feel and how you're one with the world. So I just thought what Ryan Kubler was saying, it was completely unfiltered. It was completely him. And I really admired that. And so Black Panther definitely deserves a spot on my top 10. Nice. nice. I also enjoyed it. Um, yeah. My number six I keep changing it in the moment. These top spots are difficult. I think I'm going to make my number six, Bones and All, directed okay. by Luca Guadagnino, starring Timothy Chalamet and Taylor Russell. Um, There's just something about Luca Guadagnino. I feel like every one of his films, he just like puts some sort of spell on me. Uh, he just is like an incredible director. Um, This is a beautiful, beautiful movie, especially visually. The cinematography is incredible. Um, I know some people may think it's a little meandering or um unfocused, but... I don't know. I just really enjoyed the story of these two characters, in particular Taylor Russell, but also Timothy Chalamet, as um, I think his name is Lee in the film. Um, both incredible performances. I think probably the best romance story of the year. Now that I think about it, um, yeah. Uh, if you're if you don't like gore, um, it's not too bad. It's like in the beginning it gets a little crazy, but later on it focuses more on um, the characters and their story. I think this may be Timothy Ch my favorite Timothy Chalamet performance. I feel like it's his, I don't know, that's hard to pick. It's definitely his, I'm like, not, the toughest, maybe, as far as getting I feel like he has, character. I feel like he shows the most range here, because at first, not no spoiler, but at first he's a little, um, he doesn't open up to Taylor Russell's character as much as he does later on in the film. He has more of a, um, a fr he's putting up a front. Uh, and later on, he does open up much more, especially that one scene on the hill. It's one of my favorite scenes of the year. I just see you. Oh, wait, no. What? What is, what is the quote? God, I'm forgetting. What does Taylor? I've seen it say? once. I apologize. Uh, uh, it's yeah. Um, oh, it's I. I just think that I love you. I love that. I love that whole scene. Um, yeah. 
when he's pouring out his heart. Uh, yeah, and also um, Mark Rylance, incredible in this movie, a villain who is terrifying, uh, but also who you kind of understand. You kind of feel bad for him sometimes. Um, and the whole cannibal aspect, it handles it much better than pretty much any movie has handled cannibals. It's hard to be sympathetic for people who um, have have to eat people, but uh, it does a very good job portraying the situation that these characters find themselves in and the fact that it's not really voluntary. It's kind of something that they just have to do and uh, the way it makes them feel about what they should do with themselves and their lives when they have this urge and this thing that they need to do. Obviously, it can be used as a metaphor for plenty of other things in um, real life. That uh, I don't think not not many cannibals in real life. Hopefully, plenty of other more um, more relevant and um, common things in real life. Uh, yeah, I just love love this movie. The score also Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross, and Cre- probably my favorite score of the year. Yeah, adore this movie. Mm-hmm. Once and all, it's a film that's stuck with me more than I thought it would. Um, so it's definitely a worthy yeah. choice on. It's I, it was like right outside my honorable mention, so it's it's a worthy choice. Um, all right, top five. Are we a top five? Top already? five. Oh my god. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm going to start my top five with a documentary, and that oh, is nice. Senior, which was the mm. film. It wasn't directed by him, but it's very much his project, which is Robert Downey Jr. Yep. wanting to create a testament to his father and uh, independent, you know, underground filmmaker Robert Downey Sr. Um, Robert Denny Sr. recently passed away. So what was started as a kind of a, a testament to his career ended up being a testament to his life. And y- y- beyond the fact that I have a deep connection to Robert Downey Jr. for, I think, pretty obvious reasons, um, I just found this film to be so just it was it was it was heart touching as far as what to seeing a son try to understand his father, which only would make him understand himself more. Uh, seeing the the film works in that Robert Downey Sr. is doing his own cut of the movie. So seeing like him take try to make the movie that you're watching, I found to be mm-hmm. just so delightful. And it, what this movie is talking about in terms of his, his fatherhood and the legacies you leave both as a creator, but also as a, a member of a family, I just found to be so moving. And I think it's, as far as documentaries go, I think it's one that truly just the editing and the direction, as far as where the camera's being pointed in telling this true story, I just so admired what they were doing because it showed that the the, the vision that can come from a documentary is something, as you can see, that is just as uh, reaches the same heights as any fiction work. So if you haven't seen, I'm going to assume that this is probably the most unseen film on my list. I highly recommend, probably, especially yeah. if you love Robert Downey Jr.'s career or Robert Downey Sr.'s. It is a, it's a beautiful, beautiful film. Available on Netflix. So pretty much anyone, anyone of you watching can watch it. It's really, really good. I also, I, I a close honorable mention for me as well. I really like that film. Okay, now my number five, continuing to struggle with my top five in placement. My top two are pretty clear. Three through three through five, I'm struggling where to, what to put where. I'm going to put, just because I need to watch it for a third time, um, just to make sure. Um, third time. I've seen my top five a lot of times combined all together. Um, hmm, I'm even, I'll just, I'll, I'll <laughs> stick with this for now, and then we'll see later on. Um, I'm going to say After Sun is my number five. Um, lots of people have been hearing about this film within the past few weeks. It's been on a lot of critics' top five lists, and um, I very much suggest you see it. It's available to, I think, only buy right now, but it was playing in theaters. I'm sure it will be available to rent soon. Um, I don't want to like spoil too much. It's really just about a child um reconciling and remembering a vacation she had with her father when she was younger. Um, that's all I'll say. And yeah, it's a incredible directorial debut by charlotte wells i believe easily the best directorial debut of this year um the way she just directs this whole thing the way she handles the camera and the perspectives and the way she shoots scenes you would think it's shot by a veteran director but it's somehow her first time it's just mind-boggling um and yeah just the way she does a lot of still shots and shots that are like just there and you sit on them for like multiple minutes and um just the way everything is framed just incredible stuff uh the performances, Paul Mescal and Frankie Corio, uh, both incredible here. I mean, Paul Mescal, this is some really good work. Uh, there's a lot of under the surface stuff that you see throughout the whole film with him. And then there's one moment where it's kind of let out. 
but it's not let out in the kind of typical Oscar Beatty emotional way. It's let out in a much um a more tasteful way, I would say. Um, yeah, and the visuals, incredible. Uh, the ending, oh my god, the final scene, I'll just say, I, I'm not even going to mention the song, but there's a dance scene at the end that just breaks your heart. Um, the ending is a little ambiguous, uh, which I like in some films, you know, you leave with your own thoughts about what has happened. Um, the, the director doesn't directly tell you. Uh, and yeah, this just this is one of those films, like you mentioned with Bones and All, um, that just has been stuck on my mind, like forever, ever since I saw it. And it's just a really, really good movie. So I suggest it to anyone who hasn't seen it. I will be catching up with that very soon. Yes, highly yeah, suggested. I look forward to the day. Um, number four for me seems to be on everybody's top ten list this year, and it completely deserves to be everything, everywhere, all at once. Mm. This took what should be just unfilmable. It's this if you hear this story, this this should not be as succinct as it is. But it is because you have two very talented directors in the Daniels, uh, just such absolutely innovative creators and how they think cinematically was just breathtaking to behold. Uh, you have such a talented ensemble cast dedicated to this just absolute absurdity of this movie. Michelle Yeoh, Kihu Kwan, Stephanie Su, Je- Je- uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and James Hong, just all extraordinary and always managing to keep the center clear, which is this strong emotional story about this immigrant family. I just absolutely loved everything everywhere all at once for truly taking chances. And also just kind of being just a testament to why we love cinema. It manages to pay homage to so many different types of films from, you know, National Geographic to Pixar animation to, you know, the action adventure to world cinema with a lot of Asian inspired films, you know, like the works of Wong Kar Wai and just absolutely what it's doing structurally, what it's doing um, emotionally, everything about everything everywhere all at once is a true triumph and achievement. And it definitely deserves a spot in my top four. It was really hard to keep it from going higher. But I think that just speaks to how great this year was that something like everything yeah. everywhere is at number four. Agreed. Uh, speaking of odes to cinema, my number four is um, Babylon, a recent release. Um, I think it might need I've seen it twice, which is surprising, even myself, considering it's three hours long and in theaters only um, might need a third watch to cement where it lands on the list. Uh, but the second watch, I liked it even more than the first watch. Um, Yeah, this is just an incredible film visually just blows my mind each time i saw a clip um circulating on twitter about um a certain moment in a party scene and just the dancing and just it's like a one shot and i don't know just everything cinematically this is like cinema at its top tier technically the acting margot robbie continues to blow my mind with her performance in this film brad pitt one of his best performances i would say i think this is a role that very much suits him um he has some roles that don't suit him, and I think this is a role that is um very fit to what he is capable of. Diego Calva, our eyes into this whole movie. The movie doesn't work without him. Very good. Gene Smart, I think we mentioned in our review, has one incredible scene um, that should just everyone should everyone should see. Um, yeah, technically incredible. What it has to say about cinema. Um, it seems like people have different takes about what Damien Chazelle is trying to say, which is something I like in any film. The fact that no one comes away with the same thing. Um, the ending I think is perfect just everything about the film there are, there are some scenes that I want to talk about but it's clearly not enough of you have seen it so I'll, I won't spoil anything but please watch Babylon please watch it on, on the big screen well hello college because your number four is my yeah. number three nice um, this is the other filmmaker who's only made eight plus movies in my book and Damien Chazelle's Babylon might be his boldest film yet um, it's boldest I, for sure yeah yes I agree with everything you just said i think this is truly a group of artisans centered around an idea which you know a lot of these movies you know as they should want to tell a great story but i think this film more than any other really has a perspective on life that it may be equal to black panther in that regard but like has a perspective on life and specifically the life of hollywood and it wants to deliver that message comedically. I think that's the biggest surprise to me was how funny this film was, but it's also one of the more darker films. Uh, yeah. I think that just production wise, the 
you can really feel this movie. The texture of Babylon is incredible. I mean, every bodily fluid imaginable comes up at some point. And I, I just, I thought Damien Chazelle just continuing to impress, continuing to push the boundaries of what uh, some a film could be from a major Hollywood studio. And this, it, it's a film that I think was so alive when you're watching it and then when you leave the theater it becomes a ghost that will hold on to you forever yeah yeah there's a sensation during a lot of the scenes in this film that is just like not really describable and i think that's why i needed to see it a second time it's just like incredible it's like the feeling really of cinematic. cinema truly taking over your body yeah mm-hmm. agreed um oh yeah you just did yours okay my number two i thought we were yeah we shared the spot my number three <laughs> is uh, Nope, which you mentioned earlier. I really, really love this movie. Um, It's another movie that has stuff to say about Hollywood and cinema in general, uh, which everything it has to say about that, it's it's a little under the surface. I know lots of people didn't pick it up, but I think once you see it and then you rewatch the film with that perspective, everything connects perfectly. Uh, Some people complain about certain subplots, like the monkey subplot with Gordy. I think that also connects perfectly with what Jordan Peele is trying to say. Everything connects perfectly. I mean, he is just one of our best modern directors, I would say. Each of his, uh, he's like, like you mentioned, Damien Chazelle, someone who has made all A-plus movies for me personally. I loved Get Out. I loved Us. I loved Nope. Um, Also, like Babylon, probably his biggest and boldest film yet. Um, Largest scale. The shots, the cinematography is incredible. This, um, The way they shoot for nighttime here is just like, I haven't seen anything done on film like that before. And seeing the behind the scenes way that they do that was also incredible. Uh, the way that they shoot the um, UFO, I don't want to spoil anything. The way that they shoot the UFO, um, also incredible. I know lots of people have made the comparison, but it's kind of like Jaws, the way it's hiding in the clouds. The sound the design is hiding in the water. Movie. Sound it's design, good. oh my God, the screams is all I'll say. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the sound design is really good. Everything technically is really good. Like you mentioned, Daniel Kaluuya, Kiki Palmer, I think the more I think about it, um, they're the characters in all of his films that I feel like I've connected to the most emotionally. Um, I liked Lupita Nyong'o's character in Us, but there was, I think, intentionally some sort of like distance and confusion surrounding her character within the film. Um, I do really like, I forget its name, I think Chris in, um, in Get Out, um, also a really and good it, character. Daniel Kaluuya? Yeah. yeah. I think his name is Chris. Chris, I, Chris I Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and but I, I thought I feel you like forgot his name. I was like, you just Daniel said his name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, um, his character's name. Um, yeah. but these two characters and their relationship, I think it's the brother sister relationship. Um, really pays off at the end. Um, uh, just I think they're the characters I can connect to the most. Um, is all I'll say. And the supporting cast, Brendan Perea, was a surprising standout. Um, I could keep going on, but I don't want to take up too much time. I love Shinope. I agree, obviously, because it's on my list. Um, yes. <laughs> And number two is a film you already mentioned, The Fablemans. I just found this film mm-hmm. to be, oh my God, just for the 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 rising filmmaker in me, the person who wanted to make movies when he came out of The Force Awakens when he was 13 years old and just felt, just was impacted by the power of cinema. This film truly captures that pursuit. Um, I f- loved how... I, I think it's Spielberg's probably most ambiguous or one of his more ambiguous films as far as it's a film yeah. that's all about discovering that life has no answers and you kind of just have to live in that. Like you can yeah. try to get control. And I think this movie is all about, you know, Gabriel LaBelle's character, um, Sammy trying to get control over his life before just admitting and relinquishing that and just realizing you never will. You can try just live life in a way that makes you happy you know that beautiful line at the end where michelle williams you you have to do what your heart says you have to Mm -hmm. um i think that's it's it's a film that does not lie to you about what life truly is it's a it's a film that doesn't lie to you about that your parents are not these infallible beings they are complex people they are people first and your parents second and so often we reverse that and we think of them only as far as we use them in our lives. And I loved how- I think you're going to like After Sun. Yes, I think All I might. <laughs> uh, I think that that's what I loved about The Fablements was just the authenticity and the family life and how that is mirrored in his discovery as a filmmaker. It, like a lot of these movies has so many just instantly hilarious moments. I mean, the monkey sequence, you know, some of the high school mm-hmm. stuff is a lot of fun um just i truly felt that i was in this family 
And if cinema is about embodying you in the world and, and the characters, there are so many specific moments where I felt that I was just one with them. I was sitting in that car in the rain as Michelle Williams puts her heads down on the on the steering wheel. I was one with Paul Dano after he looks at the picture of his ex-wife. It, mm-hmm. There were just beautiful, beautiful moments in this movie. Um, and I also now can quote the entire ending scene with uh, a certain film director. Oh, yeah. And because That's, of that, yeah. uh, this has now become a very special <laughs> moment. I love doing that impression now with anybody who sees this movie. Yep. So number two, a very, very high number two is a fatal I said, I don't know if it, I, I don't think I said it here yet, but I have put both my number two and my number one in my top 10 favorite films of all time. And I think they're both worthy of that. Uh, I know it's been a good year in film. Yes. Um, and people saying it's too early, you know, sorry. If, if I, if I if, when I saw the 400 blows, list. when I saw the 400 blows in 19, you know, which I didn't see it in 1959, <laughs> but it came out in 1959. And after one watch, mm-hmm. I knew it was going to be in my top four. So I think just because it's new, if it hits you on the first watch, it hits you. I've seen the film yeah. four times now, and I know I'll see it 400 more times over the next decade years however many lives i get mm-hmm. exactly yeah um i agree that was why i was my number i think eight nine somewhere around there um my number two is everything ever all at once i agree with everything you already said about it um truly i think when we look back on it probably going to be the most influential film of this year i would say um probably the most uh yeah Probably most influential, if I had to guess. Um, just felt like a completely different movie, like anything I truly haven't really seen before. Um, yeah, I saw it on my birthday. Also, one of my we'll talk. I guess we already kind of talked about our favorite theatrical experiences. This is definitely one for me. Um, I I just really love this movie. Everything about it emotionally. I mean, the multiverse stuff is just something I'm personally very tired of, and the way that this film handles it is just like. It's much more about the personal connections than it is about the whole multiverse thing. It's um, using the multiverse as a way of tackling all of those topics and everything. Um, Michelle Yeoh is incredible in the film. She gets to do everything. All the actors really get to do everything in terms of emotions, because that's what a movie titled Everything Everyone Wants asks them to do. Um, Stephanie Sue, in particular, I just want to shout out maybe my favorite supporting actress performance of this year. Um, she is just incredible in this film. Kihi Kwan, getting all the accolades as deserved. Um, yeah, just everything about this movie, the way it handles family, generational trauma, everything, just chef's kiss. And I mean, cin- I mean, everyone talks about it, but cinematically, everything it achieves is just insane. I don't, I think we already talked about it. I don't understand how Premiere Pro didn't crash. I'm sure it did, <laughs> but I just don't. Oh, understand. it definitely did. It I definitely did. tell you, it definitely crashed. Yeah, Premiere Pro crashes like when I put in two clips. So yeah, it, yeah. I don't know how they did it. Just It's, it's so yeah. rewarding, I think. Uh, you know for people who love movies to see this like ragtag group of filmmakers oh, yeah. you know the visual effects team were what five people six people and yeah it was a small team what they achieved it's just and sadly they aren't going to be nominated tragically <sighs> those short lists you know yeah listen as much as we talk about Jurassic it, World's we, a minion and Fantastic Beasts listen Fantastic as Beasts. much as we you know this whole show is about covering awards season in the end it doesn't matter what wins these awards we love yeah. talking about it because it's a chance to talk about these movies um, and we want certain things to get their recognition because, you know, it helps these people's careers. It puts them in film history. But, you know, we, that's why we're sharing. That's why we're doing this episode. Yes. Agreed. And I imagine we share our number one. Yes. Uh, our number one is The Whale. No, I'm kidding. Yes, we love The Whale. I thought it was Blonde. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I didn't see Blonde. I think yeah, I, I, blame you. Yeah. I time, time is time is short. Yeah, um, I would not waste time on that. Yeah. But yes, uh, our number one. Yeah, can we say it in three? One, two, three. Tar. tar. Yes. Just wow. Yeah. Take, you you, you can talk. You okay, I'll talk go? first. I'll talk first. <laughs> I guess. Um yeah, I mean, we, we both did reviews on this film. We've both talked about it multiple times. It's just incredible. I think that, I mean, Kate Blanchett is probably, the, I don't know what the biggest takeaway even is in this film. Her performance here is incredible. A masterclass in acting. I think her best performance yet, I think it may go down as her most iconic character and performance in her entire filmography, which is insane considering all the performances she's given. I think she's probably my favorite, one of my favorite working actors in general right now. Uh, just an incredible actress. I'm so glad that she's probably going to win the Oscar for this. Just incredible work here. 
feels like such a true character and such a lived in character. And I don't know, every moment was believable, which is really hard to pull off. Um, Todd Field is just like, I, I don't know what he did during those 16 years <laughs> off, but he, he did something. He studied that, the world, man. Yeah, he did something. Um, yeah, because his direction here is n- next level amazing. I, I know lots of people make the comparison. It's Kubrickian in the way it's done. Um, the the details and he he like knew nothing about the whole music and orchestra and composing world so he had to do all that research but all the details the writing the lines um everything he's trying to say and i love movies that do this he is not telling you what to think about it he is not giving a message or a personal thought or anything he is just painting a picture and letting you come away with the message or whatever you think about it which is just amazing i love that uh, yeah, and I mean, the supporting performances, Nina Haas is incredible. Mm. Uh, Naomi Berlant, also incredible. I mean, just everyone in this film, so good. Uh, cinematography, the sound design, another film that I wish was shortlisted. Like, nope, um, the incredible sound design here. The editing, cinematography, just everything. Perfect. That's why it's one of the, I think, really the only film that I would give a perfect score to this year. I just loved it. Your yeah. Turn. Um. I'm realizing because I also I've seen this movie seven times. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm. Again, I add up all of the watches of these ten movies on my top ten. I've seen them for as a total thirty three times. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> some good um, movies. Yes, yeah, some good movies, and I loved every single time I watched this. I saw this the first time um, at the AMC Century City, and Kate Blanchett followed the screening, and I was just instantly just it. It was the type of film that. You know, listen, we're 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 the film Gen Z. We love going onto Letterbox and or writing out my thoughts mm-hmm. for my review. It literally affected me so greatly that I just sat back in my chair, and I had to go to the bathroom. I, I you know, it's a long movie, but I just sat there it because it is just it's a type of film that you see this and you just wish every movie could be this. Mm-hmm. Uh, this original in in thought you know i think todd um i almost said todd haynes uh, todd field <laughs> um todd field's direction just he possesses an integrity that i just so admired as far as his confidence in when he chooses to edit you know the every shot has meaning and is uh, is, is necessary um i love that every time this movie ends and i show it to another person they don't know what to think and yep. I just love that. I love Gotta that the ending can have let it that marinate. Power. Exactly. Um, I mean, Kate Blanchett, need I say more? It is such an unparalleled performance that I don't think we've ever seen the likes of. It's we we talked about, you know, we've seen characters descend into darkness and into madness, and how she does it, she she gives us a sympathy to Lydia that it, it creates an like an inextricable bond between the viewer and the art. And that being said, I also think it, it captures the relationship between art, audi- uh, art audience and artist so well. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's a universal story uh, while I think really being tied to the now and really, I think one of the most needed films as far as expressing where we are today. Yeah. Is, it never ceases to amaze me. It is absolutely what a film should be um and could be and i just think that this is i think even you know it's probably listen i don't think it's going to be the one that's going to win best picture i would love it to but i think it it will be the movie that years later we will look back and i think say this was the film of the year if Um, there's any of these films that you should study i feel like this is maybe like the most worthy yeah. of studying in absolutely. every aspect absolutely just everything about it just how it how it really i think gets hum, human connection and interaction yeah it's just and every form of it you know the love that we see with nina haas and then just the despair that we also see with nina haas mm-hmm. you know she's incredible it's i could talk about this movie for days we have we've done many we videos have yeah on both of we our channels <laughs> Um, you probably already knew going into this what our number one would be, but yeah. Also, I just love how he chooses to have all of the credits before the whole movie starts. If you've seen the movie and you kind of know what it's talking about, perfect choice. Um, yeah, I I I, I went to I took a new a two hour train to New York to see this movie when it initially came out in very limited theaters, and I considered doing it another time, which just tells you how good the movie is. But yeah, Tar is incredible. Um, yeah. 
Speaking of Tar, I, I guess we can segue into our favorite performances of the year, which I'm sure Kate Blanchett is on the top of many people's list, including my own. Just um, a mass, like I said, masterclass in acting, one of my favorite performances. Any other, what are other performances stand out in film this year to you, Anthony? Ooh, I mean, I mean, it was an incredibly strong year for performances. Um, yeah. So many career defining works, I felt, but Kate Blanchett is definitely at the top of that list. Um, uh, as I said earlier, I think John Boyega and Breaking really mm-hmm. underrated work from him i think that he just creates such a it, he creates a character that you think you've seen before and then is able to create such sympathy um for him and the empathetic union that you then have with this character i found to be incredible michael k williams i believe gives his final performance too in this film yeah I'm so i highly sure, recommend yeah. checking it out um i, I mean Audrey, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave some off because I'm 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 gonna assume that you're gonna touch on them. Yeah, you don't um, have to so, give them all right now. No. Yeah, but uh, Audrey Dewan from Happening. It was a really small mm. film, French film, uh, uh, about yes. uh, this woman struggling to have an abortion when it was illegal back in I believe the '60s. But I mean, such such powerful work there. Uh, I'll say Parquet Il. I think is how you pronounce his name from Decision to Leave. He was. Mm. I mean, both. Uh, actors lead actors in that film were incredible and i thought really ground the film so incredibly just incredibly well i'm I'm losing adjectives because we've said so many wonderful things yes but um he's great uh gabriel labelle is fantastic mm-hmm. um and i'm sure then there's a, a couple more you'll probably mention um Letitia Wright and Angela Bassett, I have to acknowledge, I think yeah. they took a, in a in a franchise like that, in a blockbuster movie like that, they were able to create true human characters. And I, I was just so blown away by their work. Uh, Carrie Condon, Paul Dano, yeah. Nina Haas, um, Kiki Palmer. I will say Michelle mm-hmm. Williams, because I know she's probably not going to come on, on, on your no, list. She will I, not. I love her with all my heart. I think she is just, she's a beautiful 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 person um and then the last one i'll just say is i i really loved kate hudson and glass onion i thought she was yeah a lot of fun and i think she was exactly what that movie needed for that movie to work she needed to nail that character and she did so thank she you killed it. thank you very much <laughs> yeah so and she a, was really good yeah there's a bunch of others but i assume you're going to mention the i can one. talk about some yeah yeah uh, I like we mentioned Kate Blanchett Tar, probably still my favorite. Um, Daniel Deadweiler in Till. I oh, finally wow. watched. Yeah, it's incredible. It's just um, I finally watched it for a second time the other day, and just she is the glue holding that film together. And it's um, I know she's in her forties, I believe, but it's kind of a breakout performance. I know if we've seen her in other films like um, The Harder They Fall, she's also incredible in the, the show Station Eleven. Um, she's just one of those uh, performers who it's like can do so much with so little um, in terms of expressing things. And also it has some big emotional scenes in particular, like at the court or giving a speech. Um, It's really, really tough position to put an actress in for this role. And she just carries the whole film on her back and she just nails everything emotionally, incredibly. Um, I mean, everyone and everything ever at once, Michelle Yeoh, like we mentioned earlier, Ki Kwan, Stephanie Su, um, I think would be the key acting standouts for me personally there. I thought Jennifer Lawrence and Causeway, along with Brian Tyree Henry, some incredibly subtle work, but incredibly good work. Um, felt extremely realistic, um, gritty, um, down to earth. Just loved everything they both did there. Um, everyone, Bones and all, I'll, I'll highlight the main two, uh, Timothy Chalamet and Taylor Russell. That's, I mean, we, these are a lot of films that we've talked about the performances in already. Uh, really good in that movie. Um, since neither of us talked about the film itself, I think Austin Butler is really good in Elvis. I think he's the best part of that movie. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the film itself. I think he really holds it together. I think if you didn't have a performance like you that, you wouldn't that, know that given how high he, you are on your the Oscar. I'm high, yeah. I'm I'm just uh, yeah. I'm high on its prospects. I've just yeah. I'm not huge on the film, but I I do think it's going to be very big at the Oscars. Um, continuing to rise there as well. Um, everyone in Banshees of Inisherin, and I think the highlights for me would be Carrie Condon and particularly Barry Keoghan, who I, I'm sorry, Keoghan, however you pronounce his last name. Sorry, Barry. Um, just incredible work from him. Um, I think he's one of our most promising uh, actors of this generation, along, along with the likes of Timothy Chalamet and Florence Pugh, Sir Sharon. And I feel like he's up there. He's reached that level. He's achieved it. And he's just really good. Um, 
I other people wild card type of performances that like yeah. aren't like they aren't like the top but i think there's they're ones that i think you shouldn't miss um lashana lynch in both oh, she's so good then, matilda the musical but also particularly oh i haven't seen that King. she's um, amazing yeah the range she possesses in between those two is incredible um i want to throw out uh, i mean we have to throw out mia goth in pearl and of course yes um but we have to throw that one out uh I want throw to throw it as in good, not throw it as in like yes, trash. throw <laughs> out into the conversation. Yes. I want I want to mention uh let's see, there was somebody else I wanted to uh Sosie Bacon and Smile, I think is really Oh, I still haven't seen that one. Yeah. She was really great um in that film. I thought was really necessary for that film to work. Um uh Georgina Campbell in Barbarian and Bill Skarsgard oh, in Barbarian. Yes. yes. And then uh I mean Leslie Manville. And Mrs. Harris goes to Paris. Nicole Kidman, I think, gives one of her better performances of late in The Northman. Yeah, she's really good. Uh, and there were two more. I mean, I, I want to mention because of the power that she possesses, again, within me. But I also think for that one moment at the end of the film, I have to mention Elizabeth Olsen in Doctor Strange. Uh, and Madness. I thought that that last moment when she touches her face was one of my favorite scenes of the year. And then the last performance I want to throw out uh, is... a. I think somebody who's a little overworked because he's kind of the lead of this movie. And that is, uh, make sure I'm getting his name right. Because this, again, this is how nobody's talking about him. Uh, Britton Dalton in Avatar The Way of Water. He plays Loak. And I, oh, yeah. he's He has to shoulder a lot in that movie. He's acting a, l- a lot of times by himself or with a whale mm-hmm. um, or a tool coon, excuse me. Not Brendan Fraser. Uh, I guess, yes. A different um, one. So I thought... Uh, it's worth i thought he's he, he's great and i think as far as motion capture i really I connected with that character quite strongly also everybody in top gun maverick i thought that's a true ensemble yeah everybody's leaning on each other so yeah shout out to everyone especially in avatar that's just there's a lot of stuff going on in terms of what you have to do as an actor in there you're underwater you got like the motion capture stuff just everyone did a pretty good job with um the situation that they, that they were in and zoe saldana in particular just continues to be my standout in terms of acting there um yeah other people that I would mention, um, Dolly DeLeon, Incredible in Triangle of Sadness, really good. Everybody in Triangle of there. Sadness. Everyone, but in particular, Dolly DeLeon, in the third act, yes. Um, at the, some of the supporting performances, and she said, uh, in particular, Jennifer Eel, with the little mm-hmm. subplot she has, really, really good stuff. Everyone in that movie as well. Um, I feel like, um, yes, Smith Morton, Carrie Mulligan is also good. Zoe Kazan has one moment towards the end of the film where she's on the phone, and I think she just nails that beat incredibly well. Um, not not a typical one. Uh, Rachel Sennett in Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. I thought yes. was <laughs> incredible. Some of the best line delivery of the year. Um, you are I, I don't want. Yep, that's the scene I was thinking of. Yep, <laughs> she is just incredible. Everyone in that film was really good, but I think she was she was the highlight. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I already mentioned Mark, Mark Rylance and Bones and all. Uh, Nina Haas, Gabriel Bell, Paul Mescal, everyone in After Sun, but yeah, Paul Mescal. Um, a woman talking. Like I said, everyone in Women Talking. Yeah, I, I can't single out anyone. But Jesse Buckley in particular, if I had to pick one. Voice performance-wise, um, especially Ewan McGregor in um, Pinocchio. I thought he did yes. a really good job. It was a great vocal performance. Um, Kate Blanchett yeah. is Fazatora, the monkey. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Another incredible vocal performance, the range there. Um, and Also, I just recently watched it. Uh, Aubrey Plaza in Emily the Criminal. I mean, I love Aubrey Plaza and everything, so I would always rank her high, uh, but She's really good in that film, along with Theo Rossi, who did a very good job, um, underseen movie. But, oh, yeah, Jenny Slate for both performances of oh movie, yes, more films and Isabella um, Rossellini in that movie as yes, well, as mentioned. Um, there was one that just flew out of my head. Oh, Jenna Tommy Ortega McGuire. and the Fallout. Tommy McGuire. We have to mention. Uh, oh, Babylon. Batman, yeah. Oh, we have to mention Babylon. In. Yeah. Ooh. it's so good. I mean, there's so many. Please let us know in the comments. Uh, yes. Please. Your top tens, your favorite performances. Yeah favorite scenes i mean we shared a couple of our favorite scenes is there any more that you? i mean to... the favorite of the year has to be that 10 minute like Julia. scene in tar juilliard that's just next the one shot it's just next level stuff that would be my number one um yeah. that scene in bones and all that i mentioned up on the hill i just think that i love you one of the biggest emotional resonating moments for me this year um fablemans there are a couple scenes that we mentioned there i really like the scene of him when his parents are fighting and talking about divorce and he's just filming thinking about how he would film it when he looks in the mirror um after sun the last dance there is just 
always, every time I watch it, always going to make me cry. Um, what else? You have any scenes standing out to you? Um, uh, well, there's a lot of scenes in Bardo that I really loved. Um, mm. particularly the ending is yeah. just elusive. That movie and... was much better than I expected, given it's the really, festival yeah. reviews. Yeah, it's, it's it's it doesn't completely come together, but there's a lot of great stuff in there. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, but I will mention uh two because you know you 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 covered a lot of the indie movies, so I'll cover some of the bigger ones. Um, because as much as people hate this movie or have very mixed opinions of it, and you know I don't think it's a brilliant movie, but I think the eternity scene at the end of Thor: Love and Thunder is really oh, good. For me. I thought that one scene um was really powerful and i really love that scene and i also will say because i saw it today again i get full body chills during the the mid credit scene of wakanda forever every time it oh that's a good scene yeah always affects me just when he says his his you know the real name name. yeah oh just gets me every time leticia wright lapita nyong'o always always delivering so i'll say those I'm trying to think. I mean, we. I think we hit a lot of the... some scenes in Nope, like the digestion scene, the like yeah. bloody house scene. There's some great stuff there. I mean, Jackass Forever. There's really some great scenes in Jackass Forever. Oh yes, yes. Um, apartment for sale should be up for best original song. I agree, hundred percent. Oh, I want a cheeseburger from the menu. Um, yes, yes. That's also that a great, great scene. scene. Um, um the bar the like crazy like five minutes in barbarian where i guess i shouldn't spoil it but there's a crazy five minutes where then it cuts to justin long and it's just like what is happening that's mm-hmm. really good yeah paul dano's interrogation scene in the batman i thought was great yeah that was good yeah um everything in the third act of triangle of sadness everything the captain's um dinner sequence in triangle of sadness yes that too yeah oh, that's one long a, scene yeah what a great film that's the whole second act achievement so many scenes and everything everywhere i mean we've talked about it it's the, like the I will movie yeah. challenge you with you for the rest of your life Ugh. um and then there's a beautiful scene in senior where robert denny jr is doing online therapy and he's kind of reflecting on his life you know mm. so so yeah. many i mean listen it was such it a great going, year yeah. i truly feel that we got such a wide range of films and, and what they were achieving so much innovation happening this year and i'm very interested to see what the oscars and other groups recognize because i think that there are many ways they could come to define 2022 uh and i'm interested to see which one they inevitably pick which narrative they pick yeah it's interesting that the conversations are going to keep changing as we get closer i mean we've got like three months left right now it's looking like everything everywhere which would be a worthy pick um but who knows i mean who thought coda was going to win at this time last year yeah who thought that um yeah great year in film i think if i had to highlight one theatrical experience that i particularly liked avatar just did kind of blow my mind even though i'm not huge on the film the visuals are just incredible um my experience seeing everything all at once was also great in theaters um there's plenty of great theatrical experiences and some at-home experiences for those streaming movies that were also in. yeah great year in film yeah seeing tar for the first time in theaters was oh definitely yeah a great experience um Trying to think other, I mean, seeing Babylon, my school oh my God, got yeah. an early yeah. screening. And so seeing it with them was incredible. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And then surprisingly, my fourth time watching Wakanda Forever was the time I find it finally mm-hmm. broke me. So that was a special, special watch of that movie. Mark Sadler Shell, too. I saw that with my mom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said the only, I could see that at home, sadly. Didn't see it in the summertime. Um, yeah. And and any movies that particularly surprised surprised you this year? I mean, I think we've mentioned a lot of them. You know, Barbarian was a big surprise. Yeah, that was. Like, yeah. I think of horror films that are you know that you know doing something so original. Uh, revolutionary is a strong word, but you know, it, yeah. at points it felt that way. Um, yeah, I think we mentioned a lot of the Most Crimes of, of the Future, which was the Cronenberg film. I thought that was a surprise. Um, Prey was a really nice surprise for me personally. I'm not huge on the Predator movies. I've only seen the first one, but that was really surprised me with how well done it was. The Fallout also, which I mentioned with Jen Ortega, who's great in that movie, was um a nice surprise. That that was a well done movie. Um, Vengeance, B.J. Novak's film. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. That was a surprise. Turning Red. I'm trying. I'm I'm looking over all the movies I loved and the ones we didn't mention. I, I will say it's it's nowhere near the top of this list, but I was just surprised that I actually enjoyed. I want to dance, or Whitney Houston, I want to dance. Oh, you did, wow. 
yeah. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 it's not a great movie, but I was surprised that for two and a half hours, like I remember checking my watch and was like, "Wow, we're already an hour into this. This thing moves." Yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, I also did not hate. I remember I always say this when people ask me, "What did you think of Don't Worry, Darling?" I didn't. Dislike. I didn't hate it either. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was fine. I feel like the hate that it got was really unnecessary. Yeah. I feel like if it was a male director, that wouldn't have happened. That's all I'm saying. And if it didn't have the drama, yeah, I th- I definitely think that the issue wasn't the the wasn't the direction. I thought it was the writing like, was the issue. Yeah, it was. I the thought she did a great kind. job of directing. I I would be interested to see what she does next. So I will Me say too. that it was a Visually. surprise after hearing all the hubbub. I was like, no, okay, it's fine. She's doing, she's doing something. I, I, yeah, no, she's I trying. Applaud her. Yeah, and then I think we mentioned our biggest disappointments: movies like Blonde, The Whale, um, and such and such. I mean, or I mean, any Marvel movie this year besides Black Panther would be a disappointment for me. Um, for you, yeah, I was personally. I, I was the rare them. person who liked all three of them. <laughs> I think I am the convert. I am the one singularity that had positive feelings on them all. Um, yeah, uh, I would say as far as disappointment goes, like because you know, th- to a certain attractive. extent, I'm expecting Morbius to be bad. I'm expecting yeah. Jurassic World no, that's Dominion. Not and Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, and Pinocchio to be bad. Um, so I will say Pinocchio. my big, the biggest disappointment for me, just because it was the first film of this franchise that I actually really didn't like, I'll rewatch it before seeing the new one, so maybe it'll warm, but I was not a fan of Scream, which is Scream. Oh, I haven't seen that, yeah. I haven't yeah. seen any Scream movie, so. I, I love the franchise. I love Scream 1, of course, is a classic. Scream 2 is great. Scream 3, I enjoy. Scream 4, I think, is massively underrated. Emma Roberts gives a great performance in there. But I felt Scream 5, it just felt like a fan film in all the wrong ways to me. Mm. Um, so yeah. I would say that was a disappointment. Disenchanted, just because of how long we waited, was a, mm. little bit of a disappointment. The first um, one was so good. First one was so good, and this one was, you know, it was, it was fine. You know, it wasn't. Mm. Yeah. You know. So those are our thoughts on the year of 2021 and film lots of great stuff this year one of the better recent years um in terms of film recently favorite performances favorite films most surprising all that fun stuff um any final As thoughts you can see because we were so all over the place at the end of the we were everywhere yeah we, we were just wanted to mention every movie that released all at once. yeah um yeah just you know check uh, check out the my other YouTube channel, uh, Spoilers Ahead with Anthony Post, where I talk about a lot of these movies. You can get longer yeah. thoughts on some of them. Um, and if you watch the Marvel reviews, not Black Panther, you'll be like, he didn't like those other two movies. I have changed my opinions in seeing them. <laughs> so mm-hmm. when you, if you go back, you'll be like, what? Yeah, I do. Um, but yeah, just I'm looking forward to 2023 as always. Uh, mm-hmm. Pretty quick, I think I know the answer, but what's your most anticipated movie of 2023? Oh, you know the answer. I mean, it's actually, it's close. It's very close. My number one and two are pretty much tied, but Dune Part 2 and Barbie are just like the two directors. I mean, I imagine, what is it for you? Barbie, maybe? Uh, Oppenheimer, Barbie, mm. uh, got the same five. I gotta support Lucasfilm with Indy 5. Um, he was afraid anything Ari Aster does. I'm just there. Day one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Mission Possible 7, of course. Love that yes. franchise. One of my favorites. Uh, May, December, I believe, is coming out. This is the new Todd Haynes film with Julianne Moore uh, and Natalie Portman. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Asteroid City is the new Scarlett Johansson, Wes Anderson, Anderson. movie. Yeah. Um, Dune 2. Poor Things, which is the new Yorgos uh, Lanthimos Emma Stone mm. film. Yeah. Um, Killers of the Flower Moon, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Yeah. Sometimes I think about Dying, which is it's a small film, but it's oh, with Daisy Ridley, right? It's one of the first yeah. films since Rise of Skywalker with Daisy Ridley. So I like very that title. About that. Um, Maestro, and yes, the new Bradley Cooper film where he Carrie plays Mulligan, Christine, yeah, directing it. Creed Crazy 3, makeup. Yeah, Creed Three because I'm interested to see Michael B. Jordan direct. Um, mm-hmm. and then. I have to say this because I'm directing the show this summer, The Little Mermaid, because I oh be yes it. yes a lot because of the summer. Yes, yes, I and would agree are. with. Yeah, I would agree with most of those. Also, Luca Guadagnino's also got another film this year, Challengers. Zendaya, Mike Face from West Side Story, who deserves more work. Very excited for that. I have to look over 
um, uh, some other movies. We really only know the release dates of a lot of the blockbusters right now, so we'll get more of the awards fair as the festivals come around. Who knows? We'll maybe have our 2024 Oscar predictions sooner than you'd expect. Oh my God. Let's <laughs> let's get through the get let's get through the 95th. Then Gotta we can always start be ready. The 96th Oscar. Yes, I agree. I agree. But Bradley Cooper versus um Coleman Domingo. Who knows? Um, versus mm-hmm. Cillian Murphy. Yeah. And he feel first. Christopher Nolan first Greta Gerwig. Denis Villeneuve, yeah. Ooh. That's Will Margot Robbie versus Finally Martin Scorsese. Get... All right, so here let's take a bet right now, because Babylon seems to be at the bottom of the list as far as Best Picture contention. Yeah. So it might this conversation might be made moot if Babylon gets in. But if Babylon doesn't get in for Best Picture, do you think Barbie will be Margot Robbie's first? best picture nominated movie that she also gets nominated for because she wasn't nominated for wolf of Wall Street. oh yeah do, um, do i think barbie will be nominated for best picture and do i think she'll be nominated um right now i would say no but you know i I love greta gerwig so i i want to say yes i would say one or the other will be nominated i'm not sure if they'll get actress and picture but um okay i'd i would lean picture just because i think Technically, I think there's a lot of aspects of the one on her. Who go. knows? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I feel because I feel strongly in that maybe it'll just all go towards the script, like Bridesmaids, like was all the yeah. script. But who knows? But for those of you who want 2023 Oscar predictions, there you go. You got one. 2024. <laughs> this year's 2024. 2024. 2023 yeah. movies, 2024 Oscars. Yes. If you want 2023 Oscar predictions, we'll be doing updated versions of those right before the Oscar predictions come out in um, a couple weeks. But yeah, for all that award season coverage and more and Emmys in between, um, stay tuned around here. But yeah, check out Anthony's channel, like the video, comment your favorites of the year and everything, performances, film, all that fun stuff down below. And thank you for watching and we'll see you next week.